Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Seville. Welcome to our broadcast today. And I pray that each and every one of you are experiencing a wonderful new year and that you are flourishing and abounding in the blessings of God. That's the word of the Lord for this year. I believe that you are headed for some of the greatest blessings that you've ever experienced before. That's our prayer for you. And partners, we want you to know that we love you so very much and we appreciate your faithful support to this ministry. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the uncompromising word of faith. Today, we're going to begin a brand new lesson. We're going to be talking about God is working behind the scenes. That is a great thought. Just think right now while you're watching this broadcast, God is working in your behalf behind the scenes. Even though you may not see anything changing at the moment, you may not see anything happening at the moment, but don't ever give up on God. He is working behind the scenes. Now I want to prove that to you from the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's open them first of all to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and I want to begin reading in verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of His power. Unto me, who am the least, uh, less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now listen to this statement. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now you say, no, where did you get the idea that God's working behind the scenes? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me read it to you from the message translation. Here's what it says. My task is to bring out in the open what God who created all of this in the first place has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all along. Notice that phrase, what God has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all alone. I love that phrase, behind the scenes. Say it with me, behind the scenes. I have been using that phrase for many, many years, encouraging people to not give up. You know, when it looks as though nothing's happening, people tend to want to get in doubt. They tend to want to give up. They tend to want to worry and fret. They think, you know, God didn't hear my prayer. My prayer didn't get any higher than the ceiling. Well, let me ask you something. Do you truly believe the Word of God? Mark the 11th chapter, the 24th verse says, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, when do you believe you receive? I learned this from Kenneth Hagin many, many years ago. You believe you receive when you pray, not after you see something happen, not after you see a change in your life. Notice he says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So once again, when do I believe I receive them? When I pray. The moment I say amen to my prayer. And listen, that does not mean the end. Amen means so be it. So the moment that I say amen to my prayer, that's when God went to work. That's when I believe I receive. And if you learn to stand fast on the Word of God and refuse to be moved by what you see or what you feel, you see the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So the moment you say amen, that's when you begin believing that you receive. And that's also when you begin believing that God is working behind the scenes. Now let me say it to you this way. The moment you say amen, something is happening right then in the spirit realm. And if you won't give up, what's happening in the spirit realm will manifest in the natural. Now, I realize some of you may not understand what I'm talking about, but just listen closely. Believe you receive when you pray. That's simple. Believe you receive when you pray. Now, so many people tend to want to say, well, as soon as God does it, I'm going to give Him thanks. Now, anybody can do that. Anybody can say, thank you, Lord, after it happens. But if you learn to begin to praise God the moment you pray, that is an act of faith. That's one of the highest expressions of your faith. Believing you receive when you pray. You know, I use this illustration quite often when I'm teaching this in congregations. You know, if uh, the pastor walked up to me and said, Brother Jerry, before you leave town, 
uh, I'd like to take you out and buy you a new suit. Well, my immediate response would be, well, thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. And notice, I haven't even seen the suit yet, and I'm already thanking him. So that's an act of faith. You know, I'm believing that the pastor is a man of his word. I'm believing that he has the means to do what he just said he wanted to do. So I'm already thanking him in advance. Now, what would you think of me and what would that pastor think of me if I said to him, well, pastor, if you don't mind, I'll save the thank you until I see the suit. He has every right to say, well, go on home. You need to learn some manners. That's uh, ill-mannered, you know. So why do we do that with God? Well, Lord, as soon as it happens, I'm going to praise you. Lord, as soon as it takes place, I'm going to give you thanks. No, anybody can do that after it takes place. Anybody can say, thank you, Lord, when you see it, when it's already manifested. But when you can do that, when you haven't seen anything change yet, that is a great act of faith. And I want to encourage you to learn to do this. The moment you say amen, lift your hands right then and begin to thank God that it's already happening. You're in the process of being triumphant, praise God. Now, I want you to listen once again that Ephesians chapter 3 from the Message Translation says that God has been doing something in secret and behind the scenes all along. You know, the Bible tells us that we have angels that are working for us, working in our behalf. Listen to this in Psalm 103. If you have your Bibles there, you might want to turn with me and look at this. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now notice there, the psalmist is telling us that we ought to be grateful. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be praising God at all times for what he has done and what he is doing and what he's in the process of doing. And then it goes on to say in verse 20, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now notice the angels hearken unto the voice of God's word. Well, when do they hear God's word? When you and I speak it. The Bible says that uh, in Isaiah chapter 55, that God's Word will not return unto him void. It will accomplish that which he pleases. It will prosper in the thing wherein he has sent it. So notice the angels are waiting to hear God's Word come out of our mouths. And the Bible says the moment that they hear God's Word, they go into action. They go about endeavoring to bring that Word to pass in our lives. So you're not alone in this. You have the angels assisting you. It says in verse 21, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his host. Host is referring to the angels, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. So what are these angels, uh, what's their assignment, you might say? To do God's pleasure. And it is God's pleasure to bring his word to pass in our lives. So realize that the moment you say amen, you're not alone in this. You don't have to make these things happen. You don't have to try to figure out how is God going to do it. That's God's job. And I like this. The Bible says that God neither sleeps nor slumbers. A lot of times when I get ready to go to bed at night, the last thing I'll say is, Lord, I know you're going to be up all night. I'm human. I need some sleep. I'm going to bed. So you work on it while I'm sleeping. And in the morning when I wake up, we'll, we'll talk about it. Praise God. I know the angels are working in my behalf. In fact, get this down into your spirit. Right there, right now, wherever you are, sitting in your living room, watching your uh, computer, however you are watching or whatever you're doing, enabling you to watch this broadcast, get this down into your spirit. God is working behind the scenes. You know, and because I believe that so strongly, I refuse to say, it. you will never hear this come out of my mouth other than for purpose of instruction. I will never say nothing's happening. I refuse to say that. Nothing's happening. I believe something's happening, and it began happening the moment I said amen. That's when God went to work, and He's working 
behind the scenes. That's when the angels went to work and they're working behind the scenes. Praise God. You know, I want to tell you this story. Many years ago, <clears throat> uh, let me say this first. The book of Hebrews says that sometimes we will entertain angels unaware. Now, I don't want you to get real spooky on all this and go out looking for angels, but just know that they're working. Their assignment is to work in our behalf. And so uh, many years ago, I was in Oklahoma City. My grandfather had passed away and I went to the funeral, to the home going. And uh, I have a lot of relatives in Oklahoma. And I had to be back the next morning to leave on a trip uh, to go preach. And so my wife and my daughters, we, we drove to Oklahoma City from Fort Worth and uh, we attended the, the home going. And then because I have so many relatives there, they wanted me to stay and visit for a while because I don't get to see them that often. And uh, so we did, we stayed for quite a long time. And then finally I said, I've got to get home. And so we uh, filled up the car with gas. We started back uh, to Fort Worth from Oklahoma City. Now it's Interstate 35 all the way. And so uh, we're driving home and it's late at night. In fact, it was almost midnight before we got out of town. And so my daughters, they're young at the time. They were in the back seat asleep. And Carolyn, my wife, she's sitting in the front seat on the passenger side and she's got a pillow and she laid her head uh, up against the uh, uh, pillow and she went to sleep. So I'm awake and it's in the middle of the night and we're out on Interstate 35 and uh, we're out in the boondock, so to speak. And all of a sudden I heard something that I had run over in the highway and it hit the bottom of my car and it made a loud noise. And it woke up Carolyn and she said, what was that? I said, I don't have any idea. Something was in the road. I ran over it and it hit the bottom of the car. I don't know what it was, but apparently we're okay. So just going back to sleep. Well, <clears throat> in a few, mo few moments, I happened to look down at my gas gauge and I could actually see the needle doing this. And I had just filled up and all of a sudden I see the needle on the fuel tank going toward empty and it's doing it quickly. And I thought whatever I hit in that road apparently knocked a gash in my fuel tank and I'm losing all my fuel. So eventually I pulled off to the side of the road and sure enough, I got out, looked under the car and what fuel I had left was pouring out on the street, on the road. And I thought, my Lord, what am I gonna do? It's nearly, uh, you know, it's after midnight. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I thought, what am I going to do? And so I don't remember how far back it was to the last town. I don't know how far it is to the next town. And I thought, I don't want to get out and start walking. I don't want to leave my family out here on this highway by themselves. And so I thought, well, Lord, we just need some help. And so Carol and I joined hands and we prayed and we asked God to help us some way. Now, when I said amen, I believed I received. Now, I don't know how God's going to do it. I have no clue in how God is going to do it. So I got back in the car and I sat down and I'm looking at my rear view mirror, seeing if there's any traffic coming from behind. I hadn't seen any cars in quite a while. And suddenly I saw some headlights. So I got out of the car and I had a flashlight. I stood in front of my car. I didn't want to get out on the highway and, uh, you know, maybe they not see me and get hit by some car. And so I'm standing in front of my car and I'm, you know, waving my flashlight, trying to get somebody to slow down. Well, this guy pulled up behind me in a pickup truck and he got out of the truck. He came up to me and he said, can I help you? I said, yes, sir, you can. I told him what had happened and he said, I, I, I can help. And so he went to the back of his pickup and he got a big chain out and he pulled up in front of my car. He tied the chain, hooked the chain to his bumper and to my bumper. And he said, there's a, a station, an exit about 20 miles up the highway I'll pull you up there. We'll go across the highway and there's a little station off to the left. And so he towed me up to the exit, went across the highway. We went to that station. Now this station looked like it had been built maybe in 1940. You know, and there was a little cafe next door to it, but both were closed. There were no lights on. And I thought, well, what good is this? But the man seemed to know what he was doing. And so he got out of his truck 
He walked up to that station. He put a key, took some keys out of his pocket, put a key in the door, opened the door, turned on the light. And then he walked into the Bay Area and turned on the light. And then he opened the overhead door and he said, help me push your car in. And we pushed the car in and he got under the car and began to work on the fuel tank. And then after he got through, we pushed the car out next to the pump and he filled my car up. And I was so grateful. I thought, wow, what a miracle. And so I said, uh, well, sir, let me pay you. How much do I owe you? He said, no, it's what I was sent for. You don't owe me anything. I said, well, sir, you don't understand. Uh, you, you, you helped me out uh, tremendously. I don't know what I would have done out there on that highway if you hadn't showed up. He said, it's what I was sent for. And he wouldn't take any money. I kept insisting, but he wouldn't take any money. And he just kept saying, that's what I was sent for. And so finally we got in a car and we drove on into Fort Worth. Now, the next morning I had to get up and go to a meeting somewhere. And then a few weeks later, I had to go back to Oklahoma City to do a meeting. I was preaching in a church there. And I thought, well, since I'm going back the same direction, I'm going to pull off the highway and stop at that station and just thank that man again for what he did in helping me out that night. So I'm looking very closely for that exit. I saw that little cafe. I saw the station. I pulled off the exit. And when I pulled up in front of that station, it still looked like it was closed. And so I didn't see anybody there. In fact, it looked like it hadn't been open in a long time. And so I went over next door to the cafe. It was open. And I walked up to the counter. Uh, this man uh, owned the cafe. And I said, sir, uh, do you know the man that owns the service station next door? He said, well, son, that, that service station has been closed for years. I said, well, no, sir. Uh, a man helped me just a few weeks ago. He worked on my car. He filled my car up with gas. He said, uh, sir, you must be mistaken. Uh, that's impossible. He said, this station has been closed for years. There's no electricity over there. The pumps are dry. There hadn't been tank, uh, uh, fuel in those tanks for years. And he said, uh, you must be mistaken. I said, no, sir. I remember your cafe. I remember seeing it when we were working on the car. And he said, well, I don't understand. He said, I don't know how that could be possible because I'm telling you that station has been closed for years. There's no electricity over there. There's no gas in the pumps. And he said, I wish I could help you, but that's as far as I know. So I got in my car and I kept driving to Oklahoma City and I thought, Lord, I know that's the place. And the Lord said, it was the place. I said, well, how is it possible that this man turned on the lights in that station he filled my car up with gas and he said, don't you remember I said that you may entertain angels unaware? He said, son, you needed help. I sent an angel. And I thought, wow, an angel showed up and I learned in that lesson that angels can drive pickup trucks. Angels have keys to service stations that have been closed for years. Angels know how to repair re, uh, fuel tanks and angels can get gas out of empty pumps. Wow. Now, some of you are thinking, I don't believe that. Well, I really don't care if you do or not. It happened to me. I have the testimony of it. My wife can testify to it. It happened. God was working behind the scenes. Now, you may have a miracle that may not be quite as drastic as that, but nevertheless, don't ever give up on God. God is always working behind the scenes. Say amen if you believe it. Praise God. Now, once again, Mark 11, 24, therefore I say unto you, Jesus speaking, what things soever you desire when you pray. Everybody say, when you pray. Say it again, when I pray. Believe that you receive them. Say this, when I pray, that's when I believe I receive. And the Bible says, and you shall have them. So notice Jesus is telling us that if you truly believe that you receive when you pray, you will have it. That's when you dare to believe that God is working behind the scenes. That's when you believe that His angels are working in your behalf, endeavoring to bring God's Word to pass in your life. Can you say amen? Now, once again, when you dare to believe this way, when you dare to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight, then you too will get to the place where you refuse to say, nothing's happening. Don't ever say that again. Something is happening regardless if you can see it or not. 
I want to encourage you to dare to believe that the moment you pray, something is happening. Even though you can't see it, even though it looks like nothing's changing, dare to believe that God is working behind the scenes. And if you will and won't give up, then you will have what you have prayed for. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, and I may not have time to get into all this, and uh, we'll cover it next week, but there is a story about the prophet Elijah, who at a time there was a famine in the land. There was a drought, and God told him to go to a certain place, the brook Cherith, and he said, when you get there, I have commanded the ravens to sustain thee. Now, notice he says, I have commanded. That means that God was already working in the prophet's behalf before he ever got to the brook. God was working behind the scenes. And if you'll read that story from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, it says, once again, that God told the prophet, I have commanded the ravens to sustain thee. So that means God was already working in behalf of the prophet before he ever got to the brook. God was working behind the scenes. And so the prophet got there, and sure enough, just like God said, the ravens brought him food and drink, and he was sustained until the brook dried up. And when the brook dried up, God spoke to him again, and he said, you get down to Zarephath, and I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee when you get there. Now notice once again, I have commanded. That's past tense. That means God was already working behind the scenes. He was already ahead of the prophet before his need had ever arisen. So get into your spirit today that God is working behind the scenes. No matter what it looks like, no matter how impossible it may seem, don't ever give up on God because God is always working behind the scenes. I want to encourage you to dare to believe that God is faithful. You know, if there's only one thing that you get out of this message today, I want you to take this with you. God is faithful. He's not a man that he should lie. You can depend on him. And if you stay in faith, then God will make it happen. Listen, I want you to watch this uh, special announcement, then I'll be back in just a few moments. Why settle for ordinary when you can have the extraordinary? Break free from unseen limits holding you back with this special resource package. In the faith-filled book, No Boundaries, Jerry Savelle reveals how boundaries that have kept you enslaved can be broken. As you read, you will learn how to recognize boundaries and how to break free from them. In the powerful two-CD teaching, How to Get From Amen to There It Is, Jerry shares a step-by-step -step guide to help you stay focused on getting the very thing you prayed for. Don't settle for unanswered prayers. Discover how to get results in your life. Don't wait anymore. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the God is Working Behind the Scenes package featuring the book, No Boundaries, and the two CD teaching, How to Get from Amen to There It Is. God has an extraordinary life planned for you, a life without limits, and it's time that you start living it. You can begin living a no boundaries life and see your prayers answered today. Thank you again for joining me today. It's been a pleasure sharing the Word with you, and I trust your faith was inspired. Don't forget our special offer this week, No Boundaries, my book that I believe will cause your faith to go to another level. Don't limit God. Take the boundaries off. Why settle for the ordinary when you can have the extraordinary? It's a powerful book, and I know that you'll enjoy reading it. And right along with it, I love this message, How to Get from Amen to There It Is. You know, the moment you say amen, that's when you believe you receive. Now, what do you do while you're waiting for the there it is, the manifestation? Two CDs, and I believe, praise God, when you listen to these, it's going to take your faith to another level. You're going to rejoice. You're going to, you're going to shout. You're going to praise God. And I encourage you to order these 
uh, resources as quickly as you possibly can because I want them to get into your hands and I want them more so to get into your heart. Praise God. Amen. We have a couple of testimonies I want to share that are so powerful. This one is, uh, it says, a colleague and I are cadets on a Malaysian ship. While we were on shore on leave in Singapore, we went into a shop and a woman shared her testimony with us and blessed us with some of your books and tapes. The ship we serve on is predominantly anti-Christian, so your materials are helping water our thirsty souls. Thank you for your ministry and God bless you. What a great testimony. Praise God. My books and tapes are on a ship where most of the uh, sailors on that ship are not Christian, but somebody on there is hearing the Word of God, and I'm sure, praise God, while they're listening and while they're reading, there are other people that are getting involved. What a great testimony. Thank you for sharing that with me. And then here's one. It says, I'm originally from India, and my family raised us in a different region, uh, a different religion, rather. My sister who lives in Dubai shared your messages with me, and after hearing your teachings on favor, I began to set my faith on believing that God would help me move out of India and into the United States. I had no money to help secure my visa, but God miraculously provided all the finances and helped get me to the USA, and God eventually supernaturally provided money for my schooling to learn how to build water wells in third world countries to help finance the gospel. Thank you for your teaching and God bless you. Those are two powerful testimonies and praise God. I thank God that our broadcast is not only reaching people right here in America, but all over the world. Thank you for sharing those testimonies. Thank you partners for helping me reach people just like this. Don't forget also, if you don't receive our magazine, Adventures in Faith, please uh, request it. There are great articles in there by my wife, myself, and other guest writers as well. And I want to encourage you to place your order for this magazine. It's free of charge, and I know it will be a blessing to you. Don't, don't forget also to connect with us on uh, uh, social media. There are many ways that you can stay connected with us, so please, we invite you to do so. Join with me again next week, and until then, Jerry Savelle reminding you that your faith will overcome the world. Next week. Kenneth Hagin taught us many, many years ago that the moment you start believing you receive is the moment you pray. When you say amen to that prayer, that means so be it. As far as you're concerned, something began to happen in the spirit realm. And if you'll hold fast to your confidence and hold fast to your faith, then praise God, what's already happening in the spirit realm will eventually manifest in the natural. 